Welcome to Airtime with the Airport Explorers Club, brought to you by the Greater Toronto Airports Authority and Toronto Pearson Airport. Today we have a very special guest, the Honorable Mark Garneau. Hello, Malka. It's great to be with you. First, can you introduce yourself to the Airport Explorers? Yes, my name is Mark Garneau, and I am the Federal Minister of Transport. So that means that I'm responsible for airports, as well as the ships and uh, railway companies and lots of other things that have to do with transport. And of course, I used to be in a previous career, I used to be an astronaut. And before that, I used to be in the Canadian Navy. But I'm really, really happy to talk to you today about airports. What should people call a minister? Well, some of my really good friends call me Mark. Other people call me Mr. Garno, And most people call me Minister Garno. But I'm very relaxed about it. Okay. So what does your Canadian... Canada's Minister of Transportation do? And what is your favorite thing about it? Well, I love my job because I love everything that has to do with transport. If I could tell you what it's like to be the Minister of Transport, my main responsibility is to make sure that we keep the airplanes moving on time, the trains moving on time, the trucks moving on time, and of course the ships coming into our ports with all sorts of uh, uh, merchandise that we use here in Canada. So I've got to make everything run smoothly. Cool. What's your favorite memory from being in space? I think without a doubt, it's looking back down at earth. And uh, I had the opportunity uh, during my three flights on board the space shuttle uh, when I had some spare time, when I wasn't working, to look out the window, and that's what I always wanted to do, because uh, to look at our planet, it is such an incredibly beautiful planet. It's so varying. Uh, there's land, there's the oceans, there are mountains, there's snow in some places, because it's summer in some places and winter in other places. There's beautiful clouds. Uh, going over the Pacific Ocean, there are lots of little islands there that uh, I've never been to, but that I can look out the window and see. And then also to realize that planet Earth is surrounded by the darkness of space. And, uh, you know, there are no other planets nearby. So we're all alone here on planet Earth. All of us, over 200 countries live on Earth, over seven and a half billion people and we have to find a way to get along. So you think a lot about those things and you think about how we need to take care of the environment because you see how thin the Earth's atmosphere is and uh, how the oceans cover 70% of the planet. We want to keep those oceans clean. So you think about all those things when you're looking out the window and that was my favorite thing and it's what I remember the most. That's so cool. Why did you become an astronaut? Well, I think because I like adventure. I uh, was in the Navy before that, and there's a lot of adventure in the Navy. But when somebody uh, put a, a, an advertisement in the newspaper that said, Canada is going to choose some astronauts. If you think that you are qualified to apply, send us a letter. And I saw that and I said, oh my goodness, uh, I didn't know Canada would have astronauts because we never had them before. And I thought how exciting it would be to be able to go into space. When I first saw that uh, advertisement in the paper, uh, only a small number of people had been into space. And I thought I'd love to be one of those people. I like adventure. I like the idea of going up and uh, being able to see Earth from, uh, from space. I like working with other people uh, on board a, a space shuttle with a crew. And I thought this, is, this would be fantastic. And uh, that's why I applied. I, I really didn't think I was going to get chosen because I thought there would be lots of other people who were going to get chosen before me. But uh, I was very happy that I was one of the six that were chosen originally, and I got to go first. So I'm very, very fortunate. 
What was it like being the first Canadian in space? Well, there was a lot of interest in Canada because we'd never had astronauts before. And so suddenly I had to change a little bit because before that, um, if I went to the store, let's say to buy my groceries, nobody would know who I was and they wouldn't look at me and, uh, and uh, I didn't have to worry about it. I was just like everybody. But after I became an astronaut, there was a lot of interest uh, by the different media and so I got interviewed and all sorts of stories were written about me and cameras would follow me everywhere and microphones would be stuck in my face and I would be asked questions. And so I became very public. And so I realized that that was the big change. I was going from being a private person to being a public person. And that's OK. I was ready to do that because I wanted to be able to, after my flight, to share my story with as many Canadians as possible. Cool. I want to work at the Canadian Space Agency. Do you have any advice for me? I do. I do. And I see you already are wearing a, a, a space t-shirt, the NASA t-shirt, which is uh, very well known. Um, I tell all young people who would like to work at the Canadian Space Agency that, uh, first of all, uh, it will be an incredibly interesting job. Whether you go up in space or not, working on things that, that uh, deal with space is very, very exciting and very interesting. So I recommend that everybody go to university. So you have to go to university. And the Canadian Space Agency is mainly looking for people who have a technical background. You could be an engineer. I'm an engineer. You could be a scientist. You could be a medical doctor. But those are the kind, kinds of people that work at the Canadian Space Agency. And uh, so that's one thing. The second thing is uh, I recommend that you. Uh, and the third thing is to develop your communication skills. That means uh, you have to develop your capability to talk to people and to uh, answer their questions. And I can tell you, you're already an expert at that uh, doing this show with me. I have a question about the airport. Why is Toronto Pearson Airport important to Canada? Well, you know that uh, Toronto Pearson Airport is the biggest airport in Canada. Uh, this year, this year, if we did if we did not have the pandemic, we probably would have had over 50 million passengers going through uh, the Toronto airport. It is the biggest airport in the country, and airports are important because it allows people to travel, and people travel for different reasons. They want to go on holidays, for example, take their families to other places to visit relatives or to visit places. But they also go because they want to go on business. And so airports are an essential part of the economy of our country. And they allow us to do things that, you know, really we couldn't do uh, a long, long time ago before airplanes and airports existed. They allow us to get almost anywhere in the world very, very quickly. Just one more thing. How do you sleep in space? I've heard it is a bit different than other astronauts. <laughs> it is actually. Um, I started uh, when I went into space, like everybody else, I would get in a kind of a sleeping bag and I, it had Velcro on it and I could Velcro it on the wall or on the ceiling or anywhere I wanted because you're, you float in space. And that's what I did for the first couple of nights. And then I said, maybe I would just like to float. Instead of Velcroing myself to the wall, maybe I would just float around. And that's what I did. So this time I just uh, put myself in a place where I wasn't moving and I just closed my eyes and I went to sleep. And you know what, uh, when I woke up, I was in a different place because my body moved slowly through the cabin uh, of the space shuttle and I ended up somewhere else in the cabin and I didn't even know it because I was floating during the whole night. So that is the coolest feeling to be able to just close your eyes, fall asleep and your body floats around the cabin gently, so gently that you don't bang into things, it doesn't wake you up 
and you end up somewhere else when you wake up. That's kind of funny. It is. Thank you for joining us today. This is Malka for the Airport Explorers Club, over and out. Thank you, Malka. You had some great questions today. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Bye-bye, over and out. Bye. Bye. Want to learn more about airports and aviation? Go to airportexplorer.club. And don't forget to check this channel for more videos.